Hey guys, it's Lyret, and today I thought I would show you some issues with the Tron Glow material, or just Glow material that we've been working on in some previous tutorials, and I am going to show some workarounds as well. So this is a demo level from one of the projects that uh, I'm currently working on, and it just so happens to be that I imported the uh, Glow material that we were, we've been working on, in the previous tutorials, as well as the newer version, which uh, you will see, it's it's just superior. Now, uh, what's wrong with this material? Well, this is the stuff that you've been writing in comments uh, quite a lot about, and I thought it would be really wise to address it because, you know, I figured it out uh, with the help of some of some people, of course, and I thought that this should be a common knowledge if we are working this kind of material. Now, what's the problem? Well, let's just go back. Right, let's increase the distance. And remember, this is a new material, so we're not discussing this. We're discussing this guy. And for that matter, those guys as well, because these are just... Uh, this is Tronglo 2, which is the material that we've been, we've been working on, but it has just increased uh, uh, tiling, essentially. So, as you can see, let me just quickly delete this fork so it doesn't stay in our way. You can see that as we go further, uh, you stop seeing it. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, theoretically, the reason is that these uh, edges, the glowing edges, become too thin. But still, you can see that it, it kind of happens in real time. I go back, I go forward, it appears dynamically after I moved. Disappears, it reappears. So it goes during several frames, not just one frame, right? So what, what what's the reason for this? Well, this is the thing called TXAA. And this is uh, the technology of anti-aliasing that Epic, used, Epic uses, which is temporal AA, or I think I think actually it's not TXAA, it's just temporal A. Now what it does actually, it interpolates uh, um, during several frames, and it uses this this knowledge that it has in real time to alias the uh, anti-alias the edges, the sharp edges essentially. So. Basically, it's nice and it's it's not uh, you know performance eating, so it's it's pretty um, efficient at what it does. But for the for the thin uh, these thin strobes of light, it's it's actually just destroying it. And the same happens with bullets, by the way. So if you have like a small bullet or or a glowing uh, plasma ball, when it goes through the distance, it will disappear. And you can see that you know this temporal anti-aliasing it works across several frames, so it's not instant. As I go back, I wait some time and it appears. I go back, wait some time, it just disappears because it's 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 inter interpolating some pixels and some geometry there. No, well, not geometry, only the the pixels. So one solution would be to do FXAA. Now you can see it's, it starts to get better, of course, but it's it's subjectively better because what you get is that yeah, you will still you will still see your. Uh, edges, the glowing edges, but now it's all super sharp and, you know, anti-aliasing. FXAA is a really bad way of anti-aliasing, it's not efficient. It's it's cheap, but it's not, uh, it doesn't produce good results. You can see now everything is really aliased, and that's not what we want, right? So, you just turn the AA off, you get even better edges, but again, look at the distance. It's still, it, it, it looks pretty bad, right? You, you don't want this. So of what you want is this, right? When you get, get closer, you get no, no aliases, right? But again, over the distance, the material is invisible. Like, what, what do we do? Well, let's let's look at this material like once again. I already have it opened here. Uh, this is his instance, and this is the color cycle version of it. Uh, there is a tutorial on my channel. Sorry, there is a tutorial on my channel how to make the color cycling version of the material. Uh, you can look at it. It's pretty simple. So this is the color cycling logic here. And this is just, just generation of these edges. And we have this parameter here, edge sharpness. Now what does it do? Well, let's just go back here. And let me just work with this edge sharpness. Edge sharpness increases the uh, thickness of the edge. Right, so the lower the value, the bigger the thickness. Right, this, these edges are, by the way, they are kind of smooth they have a smooth transition. Uh, I used the, an, an advice from the comments uh, on one of my videos to to make them straight, and and I, I will I will talk about this a little bit maybe. 
or maybe the next video. Again, you will see the new material that this is this is the thing that's solved. Of course, if, if if you if you don't want it, if you want it, you can keep it like that. So again, thick, thin. Now, what happens if we make it thick? Well, over the distance, this increases the you know the, the usability of the material because over distance now you can see the edges. But up close, it looks much worse. That's not what you want. What you want is is, is this, right? So okay, what's the solution? Well, the solution is to interpolate uh, the distance from the camera with this thickness, with the edge sharpness, right? So this is strong glow three, uh, and yeah, yeah, I also use a normal map here. It's not really appropriate in this uh, particular situation, as you can see. Let me just decrease the speed because it gets really annoying. Something like maybe two. Yeah, perfect. Um, so let me just go ahead here and maybe get rid of this normal map. Just get rid of it. Clear. No? No. Okay. Yeah, I have a static switch here. So no, don't, sorry, don't use normal. Now it's going to recompile. Just wait a little bit. Actually, yes, it's already working fine. Uh, or it will soon. So... As you can see up close, it looks fine, right? It's the edges are thin. Aside from this, well, actually, even even this one looks okay. Now, what happens when you go back? Well, this is what happens, right? So, if we just let's see if I can zoom in, if we just zoom in close, you can see what what actually happens there, right? The thickness becomes really like strong. And then you, when you go back on a distance, you don't notice it. What you notice it, what you notice is that the material works, right? You can see the glowing edges. When you get up close, the thickness decreases. So that's exactly what you want. How does it work? Well, let's see. So this is the part which is the same as for this material, right? So this this is this is the this is the part. Now edge sharpness. Well, when we go to this part, the power. This is different. This is some of the logic that I'm using here. Uh, some of these values are not, you know, the right ones, the, not the ones that I'm using in the material instance. So you will see the material instance. You can pause the video anytime to, you know, to to look at this to copy this scheme. But what essentially happens is I take the position, absolute world position, which basically position of a pixel in the world, and then I say camera position, it's a distance between them, and then I'm using just a couple of of, of Value variables to get it to values with which I can work and to get transition work from the minimal distance of transition, which is up close, to the maximum distance of transition. And the maximum distance will be the distance at which we have the max thickness. Because if, if you don't if you don't limit this, what will happen is that over the big distance, uh, it will just become one glowing box. And I will just show you why. Well, if you just decrease it too much, this is, this is a glowing box, right? Uh, even even on big distance, you don't want this. You want something like that because this still looks like a box a little bit, right? So let me go back here. Okay. And by the way, I think this one has sharp edges. So let's see if I can show you the difference. Sine y minus x multiply zero point five. It's the same stuff. Spacing. Yeah, actually, you know what? Color cycle. No, no, this is still the same thing. Sharpen seal. Yeah, right. I'm doing the seal now. When you do the seal or seal, whatever, <laughs> I don't know what's the right pronunciation. This will sh this will make this instead of smooth curve. This will make just 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 this sharp transition, right? So you won't be getting this kind of thing, right? Okay, so we got that. Well, just basically what you what you want to do is you want to just copy this. This is again just a couple of multipliers. You can even simplify it. I didn't simplify it because I, I I experimented with the values and I got the values that worked for me. So, for example, this is this is I'm dividing two times, right? You can just divide one time if you get the right value here. I was just too lazy <laughs> to be honest because because it worked with the values that I got myself. So you divide, you multiply, then you clamp. Again, this is minimum sharpness and maximum sharpness. You don't want it to be too sharp. Uh, you don't want you don't want this value to be just uncontrollably high or uncontrollably low, and again, horizontal multiplier and uh, vertical multiplier. And what is this? This is different logic. 
Um, so you can pause and copy this one and make sure it works. And I'll just show what, what is this. Well, let me just quickly take like this guy. And this is not related to the distance, right? This is just a different thing I used for the basically level design. So let me just have this guy. Um, we have this instance. Let's duplicate this instance in the other instance and apply this other instance to this guy. Okay, here we go. So you can see what happens. <clears throat> the problem is that um, the material doesn't tile well, right? Basically, it's, it's just stretched, right? This edge is thin, this edge is thick. Over the distance, the, the difference will be even more apparent. So you don't want this, we don't have this, right? Let's go here. And we have horizontal multiplier and vertical multiplier, right? And this is just, just these guys, right? So we're building these uh, vertical lines and horizontal lines. And we're saying, well, okay, let's, let's multiply the thickness for each of them specifically. And this is not the thing that works too well, but for level designer, it's, it's fine. So this is, I think this is the material, right? Yeah, that is. Um, let's increase the horizontal multiplier. This becomes thinner. So let's get back to the level. No, this is exactly the opposite effect that we wanted. So this will be one, but let's see. Vertical multiplier. Let's increase this guy. Again, for this edge, it works fine. For, for this, it doesn't. So you have to be really careful. And, and you may not just copy this, OK? This is, if, if there is a better solution, if you guys know a better solution in the comments, <coughs> how to stretch this material when the object is stretched, I tried some, some, some code that didn't work really well for me. So if you guys know the better solution, just, <coughs> just drop a comment. Um, but for the, for the distance, uh, this is the, f the formula, more or less. And you can just, just connect this guy here without this multiplier. And this is the same code as usual. I just added the normal map. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is pretty bad today. Uh, but one thing is that you don't want to have these values like this, right? These values are not really well. Well, actually, you know, they work pretty well, but I adjusted them a little bit. So I'm just going to show you these values here. Um, I think I think these are these are the right ones, right? Um, yeah. So just basically, basically, what you can do is you can go ahead and copy these ones. Uh, edge sharpness max minimum subtraction. Um, you know the divider doesn't it doesn't change through based on the material. Uh, thick distance divide. This is the value that was changed a little, I think. So. These values work over some distance. Again, if you have an open world, however, you will need different values, right? You will you will need to have so you can pass you can pause the video and copy these values, no problem. Uh, if you have really big distance, this thing stops working basically. Like gigantic distance, right? Well at some point it stops. But usually usually normally it does work fine. Okay, and I wanted to touch one more thing with this the distance transitions. Um, if we have, let's say, a floor like this one, right? So let me just search for this one and put it here. Okay, nice. Um, you will encounter an artifact here, and this is this, and this is this artifact, which is when you get to the minimal distance, it will try to to become thinner line, right? And you can see it doesn't work too fine. So what you want to do is you want to go here. First of all, of course, you don't want to have probably these big tiles. So let's see. Grid spacing, let's put something like 32 maybe. No? Grid spacing uh, 32. Okay, here we go. It becomes a little bit better. But still, the problem is very apparent. So probably, let's see. Mm, let's decrease the multiplier. Still. If you decrease the multiplier, this is the or, or divider, this is the overall divider, right? So what it does is just how 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 thick these lines are in general, right? And you can see that again, because we are using this this distance based thickness, it will look better on the distance, except for these artifacts. But we still we don't want to have these transitions to 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 apparent. So you you want to just go ahead and experiment with these values like 
I, I will just take this to the other screen and show you show you the results. Let me just adjust some of these guys. This is the transition for the maximum distance. The multiplier or multiplier. I think we can increase this guy. And now it starts to make more sense, right? So you go closer. This is the thin line. You can see up the distance it gets thicker a little bit. Just don't mind these artifacts. These are the I think this is uh, an isotropic filtering issue, but I'm not sure again. If you if you know exactly, drop in the comments below uh, what you think about it. But you know th this is now fine. Doesn't look so 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 crazy. And you know we have some problems with these vertical lines, but again you, you can see that they disappear when I move the camera. And they just disappear over several frames. Like you see, now they appear again. And this is again, just go ahead here and see by yourself. This is anti-aliasing issue. But, you know, it's, it's pretty efficient anti-aliasing. So, <clears throat> once again, uh, distance-based thickness, uh, some vertical multipliers, just, just <laughs> don't mind them. Uh, use seal for making the sharp transitions, sh sharp angles. And I have to give credits to these guys in the comments, they helped me with this material, some of this stuff. <clears throat> and experiment with the parameters from here, from here, to make sure that, you know, if you put it on the floor, it works fine and you get a nice transition that works good on the distance, right? If I go back, it still looks fine, it's still thick, thick lines that, that do not disappear, don't go black, right? So. What else? Yeah, one more thing. I think I didn't mention about the grid spacing. I just, just take texture coordinates at the beginning and multiply by the grid spacing. And it, again, it's pretty useful. You can just go ahead and uh, make yourself some, some crazy stuff, actually. Some stuff that doesn't, doesn't really work properly, right? Because you get some, you get some crazy, crazy, um, basically, artifacts, right? If you go here, it's just, just whatever. <laughs> And maybe you can use it somewhere in your game, right? And I think if you just turn, yeah, if you turn off the entire listing, it just goes crazier. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, I've received some requests for more tutorials about, especially about the UV mapping, the Tron material, the, the glowing material um, in Maya or in other 3D applications. So I'm gonna do that when I have time. Uh, in the meanwhile. If you liked it, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. Uh, subscribe. Other funny stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.